An entitled guest gets up in my face, screams at me, and makes me cry. So I cuss him out, I flip him the bird, and I walk out, quitting on the spot. Here's what happened. So it was a Sunday morning of my shift, meaning I'm going to be working alone. With a pretty high turnover rate, I was one of the longest working employees there. So my manager gleefully deemed me manager on duty while she was not on site. A couple attempts to check in at around 10 o'clock in the morning. We had a full house the night before. I kindly let them know that check-in time is at 3 p.m., but I would happily let them check in early once a room became available. I showed them the lobby with a large screen TV and coffee station where they were more than welcome to hang out, and I also offered to take down their phone number if they would rather take advantage of the many nearby shopping and dining options that we had in the area while their rooms were still being cleaned. They obliged and went on their way, leaving their phone number behind. They then returned approximately 20 minutes later. They said, we're here to check in, very matter-of-factly. A little caught off guard, I re-explained that checkout wasn't until 11 o'clock in the morning and housekeeping would need some time to clean the room, but I would get them in as soon as possible, even offered to go grab a few snacks from the closed kitchen for them to enjoy while they waited. The man at this point became incredibly irritable and told me that was unacceptable and he demanded an upgrade to a suite for their troubles. I of course apologized and explained that we were unable to accommodate that request and reiterated the reason for the situation to him and politely offered the same solutions as before, but he grew more irate and not only demanded an upgrade, but he now wanted their night comp for free because their room was not ready when they tried to check in. He demanded to speak to a manager, and at that point, a part of me crumbled inside when I had to explain to him that I was the manager on duty, but also followed up that I could leave a message for the GM to contact him first thing in the morning once she got in. Now, I'm timid even to this day, but at the age of 18, several years back, I really didn't do well with being yelled at. I'm apologizing, my voice is shaking, I'm explaining again that they reserved a certain type of room, and I would still gladly let them know once that became available. Guests are now lining up behind the counter at this point, many of them looking pretty uncomfortable, just being witnesses to the situation themselves. I kindly asked the couple if they would mind stepping to the side so I could help the others while we waited for their room. But he refuses, and tells me that he will not allow me to help anyone else until I grant him his demand of a free suite with immediate check-in. I again tell him that's not possible, and I try to excuse myself to speak to the person behind him. He steps in front of me anytime I try to take a step to the side to just make eye contact with the woman in line behind him. In my tiny, shaking voice, I let him know if he does not remove himself from the front desk and allow me to help other guests, I will have no choice but to call the police. He's now yelling at me. He's going to call corporate. This is unacceptable. How dare I do this? And so on and so on. He wants a comment card now. My hands are shaking, and when I put the card on the desk, it slips over the other side and onto the floor in front of him. He then demands that I walk around the desk and pick it up for him, and that was all I could really handle. In full-on tears at this point, I stick up my middle finger, I flip him the bird, and I say to him, screw you, screw this job, I quit. And after that, I walked out the front door, leaving a lobby full of guests still waiting to be helped. From my car, I called my manager, still crying, letting her know I cursed out a guest in front of other guests and I walked out with no one to cover the shift. She said, I'm on my way, don't leave. The police showed up at the same time as her. She called them herself. She actually told me I was not allowed to quit, but instead told me that I had the rest of the day off. For several weeks, the couple called the hotel every few days to complain again about their experience, lying about details and omitting everything about the man's aggressive behavior, saying things like, we can't stop thinking about how we were treated. We've been praying over this non-stop. So honestly, I'm so glad I don't work at this place anymore because these types of experiences really make me not want to work in this business ever again. What a crazy situation to be stuck in. And that man was completely out of line. Absolutely unacceptable behavior. And seriously, he should have had the cops called on him. Like, does he not realize he's screaming at a child right now? Like, literally an 18-year-old teenager. Like, what is wrong with people? If that was me and I was in that situation, after the second time of him screaming at full voice, I would have told him he can either get out of my face or he can get in this cop car that's on its way. Like, there's no way I'm going to put up with that for a second. But I totally understand someone being 18 years old and being screamed at by a fully grown adult. Like, what is wrong with people? So hopefully you found better jobs in the future. And also, what is with the manager saying you can't quit? You absolutely can quit. I would have quit right then and there and been like, oh, I can't quit? Try and stop me. Like, they absolutely can't force you to stay at that job. Like, that's ridiculous. So hopefully wherever you work 
now, it's a lot better than what you dealt with here. Because that situation seriously was crazy, and no one ever deserves to get treated like that in the slightest. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. An entitled man refuses to follow the rules, and as a result, he cost his company over $10,000, and it was honestly all completely his own fault. Here's what happened. So for a bit of context, I'm a 27-year-old female, and I work for a small local security company. We mainly do oil, gas, and logging roads. I typically work pipeline security, but I'm between sites at the moment waiting for spring breakup, and this is when the ground starts to thaw and heavy equipment and trucks can't operate because this is a swampland. Before breakup, they've got a 24-7 log haul happening on one of the biggest logging roads in our area. Now, because of this, traffic going against the log trucks is being restricted by us. I sit down at the far end of the log road and control who can go through the wrong way. Now, this is limited to three companies as well as their subcontractors because their sites are close to my end of the road and they don't interfere with the log trucks. Any company that is in violation of this rule receives a $10,000 fine and their road use privileges are affected. In this case, they can still only travel one way on the road once breakup hits and the log haul has stopped all the way up until the log company says otherwise. Now, one company in particular has always been one massive pain the entire time. For privacy reasons, we'll call them Stupid Incorporated. Now, Stupid Incorporated site sits about halfway down the log road. They have to go down to the far end of the road and drive the same direction as the log trucks. Well, they don't bother telling their subcontractors this. So all day, every day, I'm busy turning these guys around. One morning last week, this big pickup truck pulls up and I ask the usual, where are you headed? He then gave me the kilometer number of where the site is. And you guessed it, it's Stupid Incorporated. Only this guy gives me a different company name, which is one of the subcontractors. Knowing exactly what he was trying to do, I informed the guy that he couldn't go this way. And that is when he lost it. He starts cursing and swearing, yelling about how it's complete BS and I shouldn't be allowed to do this. He tells me he's gone this way down the road plenty of times when he's not working and it's never been an issue. The thing is that private users, so just regular people, are technically allowed to do whatever they want. Legally speaking, we can't stop them as roads are public to a degree. There's a whole thing that I'm not going to get into, but private users are allowed to use the road, though we strongly caution against it. So he then says, all right then, I'm a private user and you can't stop me. But I respond by saying, you just told me that you're here for work. But all right, if you say so, you've been warned. He then floors it down the road. What followed was a four day manhunt. I immediately notify the road patrol supervisor as well as road patrol and my boss. I was asked questions for four days while they tried to identify this guy. Because he said he was going to work for Stupid Incorporated, they were the ones that got hit with a fine. And of course, it didn't go well over for them either. The next thing I know, the site superintendent is asking me tons of questions about the guy. When I said he worked for the subcontractor, well, that didn't go well either. From my understanding, the subcontractor that this guy was quoting was at risk of losing the contract that they had with Stupid Incorporated all over this. The subcontractor then started digging around and I heard they found out exactly who it was. And you guessed it, this guy lost his job over it. And you want to know what the kicker is? He wasn't even working for Stupid Incorporated that day. The superintendent told me they didn't even have this subcontractor out working on anything. One of his employees had seen the truck I described way on the other side of Stupid Incorporated's site. He hadn't even stopped there. As far as anyone knows, he actually was there as a private user. And had he just said as much, none of this would have happened in the first place. Talk about digging your own grave. This guy is actually just a complete idiot. He either seriously miscalculated how he could get his job done, or he put his foot in his mouth trying to act like some kind of big shot as if he could go through this territory without any kind of problem. So honestly, in my opinion, this guy definitely deserved to get fired because the way he reacted to being told, no, you got to turn around was completely inappropriate. Not even mentioning the fact that he cost this company over $10,000 simply because he was being an idiot. My boyfriend has been getting upset about me with the way I use my finances. And despite explaining everything to him, as well as showing him blatantly that I don't spend needlessly, he still thinks I'm very irresponsible with my money. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. So this happened two days ago, and my boyfriend and I have been arguing ever since. So I work in homeless services, and lately one of my clients has been carrying his belongings in a garbage bag. I had this really nice North Face bag that I got a few years ago, but didn't really use it in the slightest. I 
wanted to give this backpack to my client so he could comfortably carry his things in. I was sharing this with my boyfriend and he was more concerned that I just gave away a really nice and expensive backpack when I could have sold it instead. I explained to him that I got it years ago and didn't end up liking it after using it for a while and I also got it with a gift card so it's not like I actually use my money on it. He thinks I just throw money away by giving away things I don't want anymore. For example, these are just a few that he's given me. When he lost his AirPods, I gave him my old pair. Or these shirts that I thrifted 10 years ago, I gave them to him as well because they were more his style than mine anyways. He just thinks I just throw money away. I also really like nice things like jewelry, purses, and nice clothes. I don't really spend a lot of money all the time, but sometimes I like to spoil myself every now and then with the money I earn for all the hard work I do at my job. His biggest concern is that we should pay off our student loans first and then when they are paid off, we can spend money on whatever we want. And while that sounds pretty nice, I'm probably going to be paying off my loans for the next 30 to 40 years, maybe 50, or until I'm off the earth. Regardless, I don't want to stress myself out and literally just be working to pay them off. I'm on top of my loans and my bills every month, and I still have money left over. I don't always spend it, but again, if I see something I like and it's not going to put me in a financial bind, I might just get it. He would rather spend money on expenses rather than the materialistic things, and he thinks I'm being materialistic when I don't believe I am in the slightest. This whole argument has made me feel like I did the wrong thing, and I'm questioning if I'm in the wrong about everything, and I honestly don't know what to do. It really is unfortunate the way your boyfriend is acting, because I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to pay things off as well as spending money on yourself. Like, there's literally nothing wrong with that in my opinion. I think you've made it clear that you really do pay off your loans, and you're on top of everything that comes your way. It's not like you're slacking in any kind of department, or you're choosing to buy things instead of paying for your loans or your bills. Like, you sound like a responsible adult. And you're right, you're probably going to be paying off those loans for a long time. So with his logic, you literally will never be able to buy yourself anything anytime soon. So I think maybe re-explaining to him that, hey, this is first off my money, but also I'm on top of my loans. There's no reason why I can't just buy something for myself if I want it. From what you've described, it really doesn't sound like you're doing anything that would put you in financial danger. So the fact that your boyfriend is acting this way is really, really annoying. In my opinion, I really think you should be responsible for your own money. And the same goes for him. I mean, you're not going to him and saying, hey, this is how you need to spend your money. So why on earth would he go to you and try and lecture you about what you should and shouldn't buy? So hopefully there's some kind of middle ground here because the way your boyfriend's acting is really inappropriate in my opinion. And I really do think he needs to reevaluate his position. My entitled boss refuses to listen to me when I try to explain them how to properly clean a new piece of equipment we got at our store. And as a result of being forced to do it her way, we effectively ruined a machine that we only got just a few weeks prior. And it really is entirely her fault. Here's what happened. So I used to work at a deli shop slash cafe place just to make ends meet while I went to university. And the owner of that place was a real piece of work. If you got on her bad side, you were on her list. And she would be both openly and passively aggressive with a general vibe that you were a complete idiot no matter what you did. I heard that woman scream at a 15 year old on her second day because she had mixed up coffee and teacups, which differed in size by about an ounce. And that is just a taste of her personality. After this whole experience, my dad told me that as a general hint, it may be good to be suspicious of a workplace that hires exclusively teen girls with no experience because they're very unlikely to recognize horrible workplace treatment. There were two people in this place who didn't take her garbage at all. Me, a mid-twenties recovering addict who has seen way worse than what this lady could dish out and a 45 year old Iranian man who told her that she could get lost, especially when she berated him for not being willing to come in early to his 11 hour shift to prep for ingredients. And of course this would have been off the clock. So I honestly really like that guy. So with the stage set, this is when my malicious compliance came in. When I started, this place desperately needed a new wheel meat slicer. The one they had made a constant screeching noise and drove everybody crazy. About a month and a half into my employment, they got one. Industrial grade, cost like 5,000 bucks, but looked and worked accordingly. Amazing piece of kit. As we were all celebrating and unpacking it, I flipped through the instructions booklet to look up how it works and specifically how to clean it, as there were quite a few parts. The manual says to clean everything detachable thoroughly, but that the wheel itself should be cleaned by letting it run on a very slow speed and using a cloth and alcohol-based cleaning agent on the exposed part. There were some pictures and detailed instructions on how to do this specifically, and 
it explicitly stated not to take the whole wheel off and deep clean it, as this would remove the wheel lubrication as well as the anti-corrosive agent and risk damaging the machine altogether. And it was also especially clear to not let water or any cleaning agent get into the machine without making sure to thoroughly replace any lubricant. Anyways, I was working the evening shift, so 99% of the time, it was up to me to clean it. The instructions is how I clean the machine, because I trust the designer to know how to clean it. Or, I do for about two days, until my boss sees me, asks me what I'm doing, and why I'm not taking the wheel off to clean it. She berates me about food safety and hygiene standards, telling me how disgusting I am for doing it this way. I stand my ground, and I inform her I do it this way, because of the instructions, and that I'm just following the manual, and explain the reason behind it. If we scrub it down, especially the inner part, the grease will go away a lot faster, and will risk damage to the machine. She basically tells me to shove it and to do it her way. Now, I'm not going to ruin a $5,000 thing, all because one woman doesn't understand how lubrication works. But the very next day, my manager sees me clean the machine and gives me an extremely condescending talk down on how this isn't how we approach hygiene. She also said, the boss told me you don't understand food safety. My explanation falls on deaf ears again, and I'm also informed not only am I expected to take the wheel off and scrub it at the end of the day, but also after every use. My boss also wants me to make sure I spray the inside section to ensure that there's no bacteria in there, with some hints that there had apparently been a whole colony of life growing in there due to my two-day negligence. She wants me to spray soap and water mixture into the cogs of the machine they just bought. The blade is stainless steel, but the cogs are not. But you know what? I said fine. If that's what you want me to do, that's what I will do. Every day, five times a day, I take that machine apart and I scrub it down. Every day, I see that lubrication disappear more and more. And after a week, it's all gone, eventually becoming replaced by growing patches of rust. Now, I feel bad for the machine, but I do as I've been told. I only work six days a week. So every day, I come in after my break, thinking that surely yesterday my manager would have reacted. But nope, she takes it apart just like I do, clean it in the same manner as I do, and doesn't seem to think twice about the fact that this brand new machine is rusting apart in front of our eyes. In fact, she goes the extra mile and also scrubs the cogs itself, which is probably why a year or so worth of lubricant disappeared in one week. Now, the thing about rusty machinery is that it usually works up until a certain point, but once it reaches that point, there's no going back. One day, I turned it on, and it makes a screeching noise I can only imagine came from the soul of this bit of kit, wondering why God had forsaken it. And it's like the clocks all stopped. My coworker in the pastry section comes over to ask what in the world that noise was. My boss and manager come into the room with the same question, but I just shrug and I slice my salami. The boss tells the co-owner to go get some lubrication for the gears. And after a minute, he puts some spray-on oil lube in front of me and tells me to lube the gears up. I ask him where the lithium lubricant paste is, since according to the instructions, that's what you need. And he seems flabbergasted that putting something made for hinges and ball bearings isn't appropriate for a meat slicer. Two days and some tinnitus later, he's acquired some grease and then proceeds to be stumped when I let him know I'm not going to stop doing my regular job. To spend 30 minutes greasing up this machine unless someone else takes over my station or they pay me overtime. My boss is meanwhile demanding to know why I haven't told them that we need to stock up on lithium grease, which I don't even bother to respond to. I make sandwiches. I'm not your mechanic. I left that job a few weeks later, and when I did, the machine was still crying the song of its ancestors every time we turned it on, and we were still scrubbing it down from the inside out daily. I have since then gotten a sneaking suspicion that I know what happened to its predecessor, and me and my dad, who is actually a mechanic, still laugh about it sometimes. My boss did asked rhetorically speaking at one point how in the world the machine got to that stage so fast but I answered that it's probably because we've been scrubbing the lubrication and the corrosive protection off several times a day and I take great pleasure in the memory that she completely ignored me it is the only time while I was there that she didn't snap back at me and I like to think she remembered back to when I explicitly told her that if we clean this thing in that way this is exactly what would happen overall I don't think a $5,000 machine would make or break anything. But boy, did that feel good. That boss is an absolute moron. Talk about not knowing what you're doing. This lady literally destroyed that machine. She had her worker taking it apart and basically slowly but surely destroying it one piece at a time. I mean, how stupid do you have to be? And this really did fall 
on deaf ears. I mean, the original poster tried to say, hey, we're ruining the machine by doing it this way, but this entitled boss was not hearing it. They just thought to themselves, no, I have to be right. It is my way or the highway. And that clearly is not the answer to this stupid decision. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to look at the manual and properly know how to clean that thing. And instead of listening to their co-worker, they decided to act like they know best. And in effect, in just a few weeks, ruined a $5,000 machine. And I think the original poster is right. This is absolutely what happened to the previous meat slicer. I personally can't stand managers who act like this, who don't listen to the people underneath them and pretend like they know best. Because honestly, situations like this happen. And then guess what? They're going to try and turn it on you and pretend like it's your fault. Thankfully, though, it looks like the original poster was able to get out of there in one piece. And with all things considered, I don't blame them for quitting because that boss sounded obnoxious and you absolutely do not deserve to be treated like that in the slightest. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out in the description below and subscribe.